Hey everyone. Hey Tracy. <laughs> I gotta um I'm gonna text you because I gotta talk to you about something. So <laughs> but hey everyone, it is what's today? Friday, and I am going live with a extra fun and special person to to me and the hair industry. So it is all about Chucky Amos today. So he he's on time. Like you know what? The last people moving on time. And let's click. And let's see. Chucky! Oh, <laughs> How are you? Good and you? I am well here. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Yes. Um. So wait. So what's the goal? Are you you're in New York, right? Yes. Okay. And how and how are you holding on through this time? Um. I'm holding on. It's it's. I'm just staying in and just forgetting all the all my luxury things that I like because life is luxury now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Waking up. <laughs> so I have I I got your challenge and I don't I'm I am gathering forty two things. <laughs> I'm like uh -huh. well, I don't have forty two things put in my in here in my house, but. I'm gonna figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but how are you? You doing well over there? Yeah, I'm doing well. Um, there's a lot of people dying, and it, the numbers sound a lot worse on TV than it does here. Because mm -hmm. you can still get out, you can still go on your rooftops. Um, mm -hmm. People are are social distancing. It's just a few that you see on TV because Cuomo's trying to make a point. Mm -hmm. But um, it's not so bad. It's it's people coming together. The only thing that's really sad is when you do take a walk outside, there's so many homeless people. It's like the zombies. Mm -hmm. And they come up to you. They come right up to you. And they're like, do you have a dollar? Do you have a dollar? Because they make their money on the in and outs of the, of the people, of the pedestrians, mm -hmm. which there's none of here. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. Yeah, it, it's it, really crazy. Is this a different way? It's, it's our, well, it's our new normal for right now. Yes, yes. So, check it. Um, Check it out. You do know you're a hair legend, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Shade Room posted that I was a self-proclaimed hair legend because I put hair legend on my own Instagram name. But you're not self. But you're not self-proclaimed. Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> it's only self-proclaimed if you don't have proven a proven record. And yeah, you that's, true, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like we can Google you and figure it all out. Uh huh. <laughs> you know. So before I get into like you, how do you always? Every time I see you, you stay. You are always in good moods. You're always happy. You're always, it's like, I, I never saw you in a bad space. Like, and no matter where I meet you or see you at, like, how do you always stay that happy all the time? I, I'm just, I'm so grateful because like half the time I didn't think I was even going to be here. And mm -hmm. everything that's compiled up to where I am today has just been by chance and by surprise. It's like winning the lottery. And, mm -hmm. and I have nothing to be remorse, to be sad about. I mean, and then I was sad for a moment when I started getting successful and I wanted to like have the boyfriend and the whole thing and the whole picture of what it was going to be like successful, the Oprah house. And, mm -hmm. and when you didn't get it, I, I sort of went to power of attraction. I realized it was really me and how strong I was and how the messages and I was so before I was used to be hooked on the hairstyle. Mm -hmm. Now I'm hooked on the conversation during the hairstyle because mm -hmm. that's what the client remembers. They mm -hmm. don't remember the ponytail or snatch this. They don't remember that, but they'll remember the um, the conversation about things and life. And and I just am really happy. I, I try to stay happy to make tomorrow happy because what you feel today will manifest tomorrow's happiness. So even if you can't, like try to find something on TV or your phone or a picture or a baby or, or your your auntie's face or something that makes you happy, even in the midst of like not having things. Mm -hmm. and, um, because you really do have the power to vibrate that out into the existence and it will boomerang back into you. And so I try to, I understand the part of the boomerang mm -hmm. and I wanted to always boomerang fierce. So mm -hmm. I try to put it out there as much as I can. Yes, mm -hmm. but there are things. I mean, I get I get depressed. I get worried about taxes. I get worried. I get you know, there's no boys, or my parents are go over there, and I can't see them, and you know things like that. But nothing to really thank God. Mm -hmm. Well, no, well, no, that's and not. So you, it's not only that you, it's not only that you project. You actually live the happiness, and that's what I like about yeah, you. It's yeah. like you just. It's like I'm not just trying to act like I'm happy. I actually really am happy, and I'm living yeah. in my <laughs> happiness. So therefore, yeah. I can't be happy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at, at first it feels funny and you're like, oh, why do I have to try to feel happy or make myself feel happy when I'm not? 
Mm -hmm. But af af after a while of, of doing it and doing it all the time, and I get a chance to work in my craft and in the love of what I do since I was a child mm -hmm. every day. And it's like, that's how we make our living. So you want to get out there as much as possible. So I'm as much as possible in my dream. Mm -hmm. That really makes me happy too. That really, really makes me happy. Now I watched your interview with um, Derek Monroe with you and Oscar James. Yes. And you are like a vast knowledge of hair, of hair. Like you like, like you, you can spit out stuff that you like, why do you know that? Like, do so do you find yourself always studying and trying to learn more about our industry where things come from do you find yourself doing that a lot yeah yeah definitely definitely it's um it, it's it's working with the greats and hearing what they have to say about like the flatness of page and things like that and then i went to fit so i illustrate and i i draw um i i know how to fashion design and a lot of other elements in my creativity that keeps it keeps it current and keeps it mm -hmm. like what the new thing is. And um, mm -hmm. that really, I mean, that, that, that's, that's the greatest joy was working with the greats because they already know the concept and then you think of and you modernize it and, and bring it to the light today as the kids now are. They're bringing the stuff that we were taught to the light. I mean, Instagram is full of kids doing the yes. of cute stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, so when you say I, working with the, when you say working with the greats, you talking about the greats as in the artists that you're working with, or the um, greats as, uh, the greats as in like Orlando Pita and mm -hmm. um, Luigi and um, uh, Guido and mm -hmm. uh, Danilo and um, uh, Odile Gilbert in Paris mm -hmm. and all those kids and uh, Mary Frances. There's a lot of kids that were in the industry before me, like right at the '80s boom, the mm -hmm. end of disco and the '80s boom when when fashion and art and it all collided and advertisement and corporation and Wall Street, it all collided in the 80s. And that brought us, that brought, um, sorry, my phone. That, that brought us, um, that, brought, that brought them the ideas of how to bring it. And then, we, and then we were the next generation in the 90s after that brand to like really, really like take it and hone it and learn it and know it. And, and we were pre-internet, but we were post-disco. Mm -hmm. and it's that fine line in between that like home that's why the 90s were so fashion mm -hmm. so style and like like it, it, the decade it was the 70s but the, it was kind of drug induced and disco but mm -hmm. the 90s really honed it through magazines and corporations and fashion houses and mm -hmm. made it solid and that and that's where i get my ideas from that area and then put it out there to the people because if you don't put it out there to the other kids you can never spread the word and spreading the word is what makes great art Yes. Yes. Because yeah, like, a lot of people, we, like, like, I didn't know what all you just said, I didn't know nothing about. So I'm like, oh, okay. So <laughs> and the thing is, is that it's, it's much about us knowing more about how our industry has evolved and where it's come from. And, and then when you start looking back at some of the hairstyles, we see, we see a lot of kids on this that are doing hairstyles thinking they're creating something new. And it's like, no, if you just flip back a couple of pages, yeah, we already, that's already been done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just adding your spin to it. But yes, it's already exactly. been done. <laughs> yes, it's, everything's already been done. Mm -hmm. Now, were, were, were you ever a salon stylist? What? Were you ever a stylist that worked in the salon? No, no. I just, I just, I went to school and I took the test and um, I went, I stopped doing hair in my hometown and I went to FIT. Mm -hmm. I wanted to come to New York City and it was a free way to get on free housing. It had mm -hmm. a campus and you could walk out and you're already downtown and, um, and I said, oh, I don't want to do hair. I want to do fashion. Mm -hmm. I saw uh, Elizabeth Saltzman, the buyer of Saks Fifth Avenue, on a 2020 special with Barbara Walters in my hometown. I said, oh, I want to do fashion. Because that's how I could get into. I didn't know that hairstylists were like, we had freelancing. Like, we could mm -hmm. freelance. I had no idea about agencies. I only knew about the that they would call someone from a salon. Or if you were like Way Bandy or Vidal Sassoon or someone like that, you'd get the job. And mm -hmm. when I came here, I just wanted to do fashion because I thought that that would get my, my foot in the door into the fashion shows and with the supermodels, it was all that was coming on in, in, in the decade. And um, put hair on the side, never worked in a salon, but I just started doing it for fun on campus because mm -hmm. I had an itch for it. It was, it, was, it was inside me, I couldn't cap it down anymore. So I just started doing free hairstyles. Then I started charging $10 when I started going to the clubs because I wanted money to drink. 
and, <laughs> and <laughs> hung over the next day in the, in, the, in the cafeteria at FIT, the kids, they were like, this person wants you to do hair, and this person liked my hair last night, and this person, oh, I didn't even know you were going to a function with my hair and all that, whatever, mumbo jumbo. And I was getting bookings at FIT, and I realized I could do my craft, and people would want it. Mm. And, and it was, it, it's been amazing since. Now I, I I went to I went to that's how I got to Atlanta. I went to fashion school in Atlanta and mm -hmm. Harvard College. So I did, and I but I learned during my fashion school that hair and fashion really kind of collide with each other. Um, and when we because when you start learning about trend forecasting and color blending and all, all and the textures and all that kind of stuff. So did you do you apply a lot of your fashion knowledge to your to crafting your looks? Yes. And I think I got that from doing fashion shows and watching, like being a, be, an, being an assistant to the greats, as like mm -hmm. the, the names I was saying, because they they all kind of wanted me. I was the only black guy, so I got to see everybody's vision in different mm -hmm. ways. But it was the what was the question again? Well, <laughs> I was saying, but, but do, do you use your FIT knowledge? Oh yes, yes, yes. Craft? Yes, and, and the FIT knowledge didn't come from the actual fashion trends and putting that together. It came sort of like through art history mm -hmm. and and um, uh, photo styling. I took that class. There was actually a photo styling class and mm -hmm. um, other things. So you could find the like what 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 would go up here, like fill this space in and this over here, and how and how these three things kind of balance off the picture, as opposed to just having one over here and mm -hmm. it's off. There's nothing over here, so knowing those things, you apply it to hair. You make the hair go up this way if something's going this way. If if she has like different eyes, different nose, different cheekbones, the hair will go accordingly to what is adjusted for the eye to see beauty. Because mm -hmm. that's what the old painters since like the Flemish days and like Rembrandt and all that, they've already they already knew that. So the answers in the pictures, the answers in those old school, you know, white people <laughs> with, with like, you know, what, and it's, and it's, it's stiff and it's whatever, but there's things that they place in it and, um, and it makes balance. And um, Richard Avedon was the first photographer that, that I knew that did that. He, mm -hmm. everything sort of like in a scale of, of like in a box. So like a tic-tac-toe board mm -hmm. and, and it's where the eye has to go when you're, when you're looking at it, because if your eye feels comfortable, then the person, it registers as beautiful, it registers as easy. And that's what you're really trying to achieve. It's not really the hairstyle. You're trying to achieve that. And then you add it with whatever the fashion is and whatever, if it's an 80s style or whatever you add or a color, you just put it all together and it becomes kind of quintessential by doing all of those mixings into one thing. Please, are you, are, are you working, you're working on a book right now. Please say you're working on a book. Um, I need to, yes. Yes, <laughs> well, because it's like, because it's these, it's these things that, I think that way, especially coming on the photo, like I, I saw a post where you, I saw, I don't know if it was a post or a video you did, but you were sitting where you showed how you, it was a photo. So you're like, this is photo. So everything just puts forward and flat in the back. Like you don't have to really worry about the 360 of it because we're looking at the front part. And I was like, you know what? I never thought about it that way because I was always trying to make sure the hair looks good all the way around. You're like, you're like, no, we're shooting it from the front. <laughs> No, so, I, I went so to the put, back of the Hollywood. <laughs> right. I went to the back of the Hollywood sign in Hollywood. It looked a mess, and there's condoms, and there's like <laughs> it's disgusting, and no one knows that. They just see Hollywood, Hollywood. Mm -hmm. from the front, and the back is, and it's the same with styling. The photo stylist, they got the pins all up in the back, everywhere, and she's perched looking mm -hmm. here. And so the hair, you do the same thing, pin it all, make it flat, because it's the trick of it's the, you know that little trick where they say. Where that you think you're they're, you're they're gonna put the thing in the hand, they put it in like that, and then they mm -hmm. shake it. it's not there. Mm -hmm. Like that's like the trick is you believe that it's in my hand when I drop it, so you believe that it's going back, mm -hmm. and, and when it's not, it, that's the trick. You never find that out because you never turn to the other side of the page, and there you see it. It's, it's, <laughs> it's never. It's only the front. Yeah, yeah. You made my job a whole lot easier when you said. I was like. Oh my God, I'm so worried about making sure this is beautiful from a 360 view. And you're like, yeah, no, don't do that. <laughs> like, no, worry about only if it's in see. real life. Yeah, that's just in real life. Yeah, in real life, 360, of course. Mm -hmm. A picture, totally. <laughs> that's why the girls now, they, they, I've seen it now and I, I love it because we learned, 
when you turn to the side, this side should be back and this side should fill the frame. You should be mm -hmm. And like, that's what I see now in all s s um, selfies, the girls. And I see the girls, they push it. They push it with one hand so it comes forward because it's, it's, it's the fact of the flat mm -hmm. thing. Just or, creating or, you know, that with the boobs to bring, you know, it's all smoke and mirrors. And, and that's a, and and that's a, and that's a part that we're missing. We miss the smoke and mirror part of it when you're when you're creating these illusions. We don't really know that that's what I think you understand that that's what's happening. A lot of people don't understand that that's what you're trying to do. They're yeah. just trying to create, and you're like, no, no, yeah, no, right, no. You create with a thought. <laughs> it's drawing. You're drawing. Mm -hmm. like if, if my my number one, if you're a session stylist that's working with pictures and images, my number one recommendation is to take a illustration course mm -hmm. and, and I guess you have time to do that now but yeah. try to learn illustration try to learn um, the space between the square and how you can bring things out and draw and how you can make things in depth with and, and because just because my hand's smaller it looks like it's far away I could still mm -hmm. like it smaller and bring it forward it's actually right here mm -hmm. but it's because the illusion is it's all flat everything is like sheets of flatness so you can stiff the hair back and then what i would i love to do is make the hair really stiff to mm -hmm. the shape that i want you to really see in the hairstyle mm -hmm. and then the looser hairs in the front you want them to just be a bit looser because that's where the wind's going to take up and it's going to flutter those and in the picture you'll see the blur in the in the end of the the flick of the <laughs> hair, the hair uh -huh. and, and you will believe that everything is it's wind loose. And it's not. All the other stuff is placed so you can see what I want you to see, and then the rest is flooded. So y'all are just y'all are getting a, a master class, a hair master class right now. <laughs> a photography hair master class is happening right now, and y'all don't even know it because <laughs> that is like those is like I said. There's all these little things that. One, that's why I want to start having these conversations because it's a lot of little stuff that people just don't have time to talk to people about. So we're so busy running around. Yeah. Now that we have the time, we can You're just right. have these conversations and be able to do all that. Now, was was texture here always your thing? Because you like you are the master of curly hair and texture hair and creating volume and, and it's just it's it's unlike I've ever seen before. I, I wanna say no, because I, when I first started, I only wanted to do white girl hair. I don't want to touch no black girl. I don't want textures. I don't want anything. I want silky straight. I want to be in the house <laughs> doing, the white, doing masses white hair with the straight. I don't want to do no black. I don't want to be in the field. And I was that way. And I, and I, I was that way because I grew up with a lot of white people. So I was always touching their hair and their hair. And I knew how to do that. And that's where my strength was. And when I got to New York, it was black girls, but they have all this hair. And I only saw maybe because the media where the, like black girls now say they never see themselves on TV. And mm -hmm. then I never saw black girls looking like, you know, you know, African style or textured styles, not growing mm -hmm. up. Even, even the disco, we knew they were wigs. And mm -hmm. it was like, because I was always into hair, my mom's into hair. So um, we got, it was, it, there was no texture. But mm -hmm. when I started coming into New York and I was, and, and the black girls were, cause, I have to backtrack, but I'll, I'll say this now. <laughs> that when I started seeing the girls with the textured hair, it was like a whole new, a whole new texture to play with. Mm -hmm. It was a whole new like thing to work with, and like, and it really excited me. And I got into it that way by by enjoying another texture, being mm -hmm. bored with that old limp fine hair that mm -hmm. I wanted to see different styles. And now with the mixing of cultures, there's so many different curl styles and happenings and lengths and widths mm -hmm. and um, so good and um i just i just really liked it i liked i liked what it what it meant and then when i first got onto pantene my first pantene um contract in 2004 i think back early early 2000s um we went to the lab and they showed me the lab and they showed me things they showed the pattern of hair and they showed the and they showed me so much and i'm a person that like soaks in a lot because i really enjoy my craft and mm -hmm. i soaked in everything they said and took it to heart and just applied it to a lot of things and a lot of things rang true and hairstyles were coming out even better and things and so i got into texture that way and, mm -hmm. and i i can't get out of it now i love it i love it so much yeah i mean i found when i look back 
that a lot of the lip hair I was doing, I was texturizing it anyway to make it feel something or to add a base to it or to, you know, give it volume. Like you're teasing it and you're adding in your dry shampooing and all that stuff to make texture. And black girls just have texture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, don't have to, we don't have to make it. We always just start off with it. Yeah. <laughs> they come in already big. I was like, I'm, like <laughs> I'm so used to it being flat like this and then it has to come. They already coming in big. So I'm like, mama, let me grab a piece, and we're going to push all that shit to the front, like way back here, and like give you hair for the gods. Now, yeah. now have, you ran into, have you ran into a situation where somebody came in, and you're like, oh, shit, what am I going to do with this? Like, has that, has that been the situation for you? Or do you pretty much have a plan when you go into spaces, um, when you're ready to create these looks? Um, I have a plan, but there's a lot of times where you get the casting, and the girl's hair color is different. Mm -hmm. or it's the texture different, or it's shorter, or it's something else. And I'm like, oh my god, I only had this and that and this to do. Mm -hmm. And um, ooh, that wouldn't have worked back in the day. But now with color tinting and post and all that, mm -hmm. it, the photographer's like, oh child, it can be yellow hair with red, and put it in, they'll just post it and make, we'll just uh, post, um, illustrate it to make it. But yeah, it gets hard. It, 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 I, I've had where people had like real bad scalp problems mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I had like models mm -hmm. and, and, and models that like have like flakes and things where it's just like all over your stuff all over your hand and you just kind of like smile and you know you don't notice it you just right. go at it and you gotta work and, and you, try, you, try, you work through it what because you just work through it you're like Jesus. <laughs> just add as much hair on top of it. Like, I, I think we're going to use two wigs today. Right. <laughs> so just, like, keep it all together. I'm going to, I'd rather comb a, a lace, a lace scalp than your scalp. Right. <laughs> yeah, so that, that is, that is, that's definitely been that, that, but it's only happened a few times, thank God. Now, what, what, what would you say was your, your aha moment? You were like, I'm a big deal in here. Like, what did you, what was that moment for you when, or was there a moment for you when you realized, like, damn, I'm Chucky Amos, and people really check for me? Like, did you did you have that moment? Only on only on Instagram. Really? Yeah, I, I knew it was industry, but um, we were all up for the jobs, the people that like that would celebrate me because it would be like you and Tippy Shorter and, mm -hmm. and like you know the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Kim Kimball's and the, the all they all they all would um congrats oh it's so great to see oh my god it's nice to meet you you do such good hair you inspire me but I never had like an audience like mm -hmm. like oh my gosh there's I, like I'm on the subway and kids are like staring at me and I'm like oh my god what's wrong with me is my hair and so and, and they'll go we're such fans of yours and we do hair and we're and I'm oh my gosh I have no idea it just comes up on me and I didn't really know that what I was doing. I know when you live your life as a black person, you know you're black, but as you're living your day, you don't know you're black. Mm -hmm. To what you're doing, you're doing it because you like it. it you don't even, you see an out. Mm -hmm. so you don't even kind of see your own blackness. When, when those basketball players and all those kids are doing their thing, they're not seeing their color at that mm -hmm. moment. They're seeing the game. And when I'm seeing the, the hair, and I didn't realize that what I love to do and my what I and the things that happened to me and my experiences with FIT and other working with um, other hairstylists, um, that my craft would inspire people with the skin tone because when you're looking from the outside in, you're seeing the skin tone doing hair, mm -hmm. and I'm not seeing the skin tone doing hair. So I didn't realize that I was doing that for kids, especially of color, or for black women of color that really said, "Oh, he's the guy and he's the one." I never thought that, and that's why probably I'm still humble now. You hardly ever see me here on any of these live shows. No. So, <laughs> yeah, but um, and I love. But no, well, you are with the Chuck. You have you. Uh, for a lot of people, like like you and Oscar James and the Tippy Shorters and the, the Ted Gibsons and all those, it, you guys have shown that there's a different way of doing this. Yes. You know, we've already taught that you just do hair in a salon, that you don't know that you can get to that next level of things. And it's like, oh, wait, what? Like, you know, knowing that there was hair style of me, like, you know people get their hair done, but like, I thought, I'm from Toledo, Ohio, I thought that when you see magazines, the girls that got their hair done before they went and shot the magazine. I didn't know there was a hairstylist there actually 
doing it. Yeah, me either. I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. I, I so, no, and then I didn't know nobody. I didn't know nobody black was back there doing it too. So now to be able to see, well, now to see these people and see what you guys are able to do, and the fact that you guys are still in the game, like you know, it's twenty twenty, and you and you're still creating iconic looks. You're still creating um, looks that still push the envelope. You know, when you posted the video about the movie and the, and the girl with the rope and the. Um, that you said you did a hair for for April Fool's Day. It's like that's still that's still something that can still be worn today. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because that's so, what seeing hair in everything. Wherever there's something hair or whatever, I, it, it's like you can make hair out of anything now. Mm -hmm. I mean, make anything out of hair. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, like, so now, when you still have, so how do you feel when you still have younger artists now calling on you to help create looks for them? Like, you know, or, or still being able to, like you said you did your first Pantene shoot back in 2004, 16 years later, and you're still creating trend-setting styles for the same company. Like, how does that feel for you? I love that. I, I love, I love um, what makes me very, very proud that makes me feel like a legend, too, is that, like, these corporations put their money down and they bet on my hair to sell that product. Mm -hmm. That they, that, like, you you can do a do and go for a thousand. You can do a you can do a, this for that for two thousand in a hair wig. You can sell a wig for ten thousand. But when you're getting like the big money from like L'Oreal and companies, and they're like at the crap table, and they're like we're putting that much down, and we're putting it on Chuck Amos, and he's gonna deliver that fucking hair for us. And I get like, I, I, I it's like overwhelming because just when you stand back and see this, the landscape of New York City, all those buildings, half of those are the corporations mm -hmm. in this world. And for those big buildings to call upon small me to go do this hair for them and bet their billions and millions of dollars on that commercial to, for me to deliver, that is the most humbling thing that, that I get from this industry. Besides like seeing a person, I guess it's humbling for me because mm -hmm. I get humbled in a way for others when they're satisfied with their hair and they love themselves and they see themselves as beautiful. And most of the time we can capture that beauty through the conversation before the hairstyle is finished. Mm -hmm. so feeling beautiful through the conversation. Mm -hmm. So, but to have the corporation do that, 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 that's what really humbles me the most because it's, and, and I really have to push and, and my mom's on here somewhere. Hi mom. <laughs> She's watching. Um, she, she, She's been on the phone with me many times prior to shoots because mm -hmm. I get real nervous and I get real scared because under all this happy Chuck Amos legend is still that scared boy from Massachusetts that kind of like still wants validation, still wants to like get hired again and all that stuff. So I go through it a lot prior to the shoot. And mm -hmm. then I get into a good space. I watch a great show. I get eat food and I'll get into it and we'll bust it out the next day. And um, but I get my ideas from keeping my ear to the ground. I guess that's the quote. Mm -hmm. but, um, it's the young kids. I really am. I'm, I'm like a Warhol, like Andy Warhol used to like. He was so old, and he used to hang out with all the young kids and just pack his house with young kids and listen to what they say and look at what they're doing and do that. I don't want to be that old person that looks at them like, oh, look at them, and oh, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, oh, no, no. I want to like, what are you about? What are you thinking? What is the new music? What is, you know, the dances and the clothing and the era and times are what is dictating their movements. Mm -hmm. and they're taking stuff from my time so that I can see little bits of my time in them. And then I realize, oh, this is what's going on. And then I try to make some, build from there, build an idea from, about hair from there. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I. This is our first. I mean, we see each other. This is our first time having a conversation. Conversation about yeah. subject hair wise, and I. All of this has given me life, and I know it's giving people all here life um, too, because it's just, it's just a great, it's just great information uh, to have, and the fact that to to listen to you say that you get nervous before you, you know, uh, yeah, no, but see, but we don't. People, people beat themselves up for having those type of feelings when it's time to go into something. It's like, but no, even the greats still get nervous. Yeah, you know when it's time to do something because you know you're about to, you're about to create something to be put out into the public. The nervousness is what pushes you towards the greatness. If mm. you get rid of the nervous, you don't have the greatness. It's yin and yang. Mm -hmm. You have to feel that nerve to push. 
That's why you apply to a college. That's why you move away from home. That's why you have a new baby. That's why you get married. That's why you travel. You don't know if the plane's going to go down. You don't know if the baby's going to die. You don't know if your wife is not going to say no when you bend down with the ring. But mm -hmm. you take that chance anyway, and it's nervous, but you do it because it, 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 it's what brings the greatness on. Mm -hmm. You call it by the feeling of the crap. And, and you must. It's, it's an emotion that you can't deny. Mm -hmm. Because then you deny yourself. Mm -hmm. when, when, you're getting, when you're feeling bad about things, about not, I, I shouldn't feel this way, I shouldn't feel this way, don't ever, they say don't shit on yourself, don't shit on yourself. You sh shouldn't, shouldn't have to do that. You, you're validated in your feelings. Mm -hmm. and, but as long as you know how to move on from it, as long as you know that you still got the craft and you still know how to pick up a brush and place a pin, you will work it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and those companies want you to work it out. Mm -hmm. They want to... Because I, in the beginning, I got sort of, woe is me. I had a lot of friends and people that were, oh, Chucky, and oh, you're, 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 and when I got on those shoots, there were no people like that. Mm -hmm. They were like, and I would, oh, I'm not sure, you know, and, and I would, it's this, and, and the way, the, the styling's confusing, and the makeup's confusing me, and I, they don't want to hear that. They just want to know that you are equipped with the mind to say, okay, we're gonna move the bun down here, or we'll stop it from there, we'll give her a long ponytail, and that'll be the end of it. I'll blow a fan, and like, you just have to be equipped to move forward. Mm -hmm. And that's it with everything in life. Same with this happening now. You can't stay in the cut of the pain of this. Mm -hmm. You have to know that this is the push towards your greatness, however it is. Mm -hmm. Maybe you just maybe I'm overwhelmed. I, I haven't been on I haven't been on lives. I haven't been doing tutorials. I haven't been doing any of that stuff because I work so much and I, I'm so overwhelmed in the first place that now this is the time where I'm like, child. <laughs> <laughs> I've had my little wine drink. A little I spiked a little <laughs> ginger ale with my wine. <laughs> this is the time to and, and it's whatever way you want to deal with it, what, yeah. however you want to deal with it because I can't tell you because only you've been inside yourself every single moment, every single second of the day inside your head. I can't tell you what to do, mm -hmm. but, I, but as long as it doesn't hurt you and you're not badgering yourself, if you're sitting on the couch, you didn't do exercises, the not doing of exercises isn't as bad as the damage you're doing to yourself by okay. saying, I didn't do these exercises today. Mm -hmm. So let it go. And you have all the time in the world and it's legal now. You legally yeah. home, <laughs> but you legally home, child. They send us checks to stay home. Shit. Right. I feel like my. Uh, I feel like my. Uh, <laughs> I feel like back in the day, I'm like, send me food stamps, honey. I'll take food stamps. Right. Check. I'll take, honey. I'm. I'm. Uh, if I if I worked on my body, I'd be on OnlyFans. I'd be right. Like. <laughs> like <laughs> now, like I I just I know can't through the thing to try to, to do hair. I wish I could reach through the screen <laughs> and do some hair. Right. I know, already, I know the answer to this question already, but I'm at, I ask everyone this. Do you, do you subscribe to the celebrity hairstylist? So are you the celebrity Chuck, Chuck Amos, the celebrity hairstylist, or are you Chuck Amos, the, the, the hairstylist that happens to do celebrities? Yeah, the hairstyle that does celebrities. Gotcha. Okay, because you, know, you know, everybody wants to be. Everybody's like, I want to be a celebrity hairstyle. It's like, y'all, it's way more to what we do than just doing that. Yeah, because that that really wasn't even the title back in the day. Because there weren't um, the Jose Eber who did Fair Fawcett's feathered haircut, the iconic. Mm -hmm. Like he, they would say he's a celebrity hairstylist in press. Mm -hmm. But like everyone knew him as the hairstylist on Rodeo Drive that whooped your hair, honey, in his chair, and you go. And, mm -hmm. and, and it was, he was doing thousands of regular women and Farrah Fawcett and maybe two others from Hollywood. So mm -hmm. it, was like, it was like you were a hairdresser, but you happened to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. But now, because the title's there and everyone wants a title now, mm -hmm. kids don't really want to work. They want to do one girl and say, I'm a celebrity hairstylist. And I did. Celebrity hairstylist is when you know to take your shoes off at the door when you walk in. Mm -hmm. You know when not to speak when you don't speak. Mm -hmm. A celebrity hairstylist is a hairstylist that doesn't look at the girl's phone over their shoulder while you're doing hair. You make sure that you're looking to the side or to this side when she has her phone because if anything was to go down, 
Oh, Chucky was looking over my back of my head. My security camera over there, suddenly, he was going like this, looking at mm -hmm. my phone. So you don't look at the phones and everything's happy and everything's always nice. And no matter what the jumble is, you can't eat, you can't sleep, the hotel's wrong. My, my luggage didn't happen at the airport. You are, and that's a celebrity hairstylist because that's what, that's what, you're really in the house. If you want to talk about house niggas, you're <laughs> hot, what, like celebrities is you're in the house. Mm -hmm. But if you didn't think that you were in the house before, you're in the house when you're mm -hmm. celebrities. And all that comes from the house Negro's mind as opposed to the free ones in the field. Or mm -hmm. Samson and Carrion. <laughs> and that was way, way over there. Mm -hmm. Me, Carrion. But we have to be right here. What do you need? What do you want? What do you like? What can I serve you? You're in the house. And if you have to have that mentality, that is your celebrity hairstylist. Mm -hmm. All that stuff like I flung this girl's hair, I placed a wig on her or, or did her edges and did whatever. That's not being a celebrity hairstylist. That's being a hairstylist that just does celebrity. Uh -huh. celebrity. But I see all the kids, they'll look at the celebrity's phone, they'll do the things, they'll, they'll talk like they know them, and they'll blah, 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 blah. And honey child, you will see how fast you are not anyone's celebrity hairstylist. Mm -hmm. Because if it's not in you with the proper responsibility, it's a big responsibility. Mm -hmm. You have to take that and uh, that, that's what it is. So yeah. these kids, these young kids. <laughs> Indy Star, yeah, because now you just you took you just took it to Indy Star said, "Wow, you went deep," and yet you took this to you took it to a whole nother, but a better understanding of what it really is. Like, yeah, you know, like, I think that what people don't understand that titles come with responsibility, and you just and you just you just put the responsibility to the title. It's yeah, like, okay. If you're gonna if this is what you want to be, here's the responsibility of what that means. And I don't think that people really understand that. Now, now was, if somebody, when somebody hear this play back, they're like, oh, yeah. yeah, I'm not that. Yeah, I'm not, that's not, I'm not ready for that responsibility to take on that title. Yes, yes, you have, you, you, have, you really have to be that way. It's, it's, a, it's a hard road. And when you're, especially with someone who's there for a long time and you're going on the road, you're flying in planes, and you're, you're traveling with them and doing that whole thing, you really have to like know how to, keep yourself in your own lane, mm -hmm. separate from the job. Mm -hmm. Because no one wants to hear that. Now, you've done a long list of people. Now, you have a long roster. Like I said, I bumped into you. Wait, you have a long roster. And, and you know, you have a long roster. You have people that just trust you and like being around you and like the energy that you bring. Because I saw Chucky at the Soul Train Awards. He was doing Erica Badu. Erica Badu had a hat on. I said, well, Chucky, what you doing? He asked him, what? Was she wearing the hat? <laughs> he said, "Yeah, I'm here with Eric." I was like, "Well, what? She has a hat on and a scarf." He was like, "I put the I put the scarf and the hat on." <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay. Oh. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, yeah. you know, so you have a long list of celebrities that you have done that like being around you. But if you could pull like somebody that's, that that's made an impact in your career in your life, do you have any? Do you have a, a celebrity that done that for you?" Um, Christy Turlington, and I, and it's, it's the a story is kind of known, but um, I just did my friend Roshan, um, um, her, I did her hair at FIT, and we went to, well, first off, at FIT, the game that was played was how we could get into the fashion shows. Mm -hmm. So you would like find ways to like know people or go to fashion houses or go to the front desk and talk to the security guard two days before the show so you could get into the shows. So I was able to get into Michael Kors like in 90, mm -hmm. 90, it's like maybe a semester in at FIT. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to Michael Kors, Michael Kors. And all the supermodels were walking down the runway and I loved, and it was right at the same time that George Michael's, um, uh, that, that song. <laughs> right. <laughs> all the supermodels, I can't think, that they, that that was going on. So seeing like Christy Turlington and Naomi and all those kids, but I really love Christy Turlington. She's French and El Salvadorian. I think it was such a great mix back then with her eyes. And I saw it as, oh my God, I'm running over to her and I'm gonna talk to her. And I had nothing to say. And I said, oh my God, Christy, I'm such a fan and I can't believe I'm meeting you. I'm gonna be a hairdresser one day. I <laughs> care. And my friend was with me 
and 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 she said, "Oh my gosh, you you should come to my friend's party tonight." And I was like, "Like Christy Turlington, like." And then I was fat, and I had a Jerry curl, honey. I had a Jerry curl back then. I was coming from. I was so late on the on the on the fashion scene when I first got. I thought I was like you know whipping it. And she's right. gonna ask me to go to this party, so. I go to the party. It is Orbe's party at the Red Door. He was opening up the Red Door Salon on Fifth Avenue. Mm -hmm. And I took one friend because I said, "Can you? I want to take a friend with me. I, I'll be nervous to go. And she said, yeah, I'll put you on list. And so I get there. The lady goes, you're on plus party. So I could have brought all my friends, child. Chrissy Turlington put me on this list. <laughs> and, and I get on the list. And my friend is standing there with this big, like, pineapple sort of hair thing that I did. Mm -hmm. um, and this black woman goes, who did your hair? And she says, and she says, oh, my friend Chucky here, she, he did it. And she goes, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Here's my card. And she turns it over and she says, don't look at it until you, until you leave the party. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, okay, cute. Put it in my pocket, ready to go to this party. The elevator door opens. We're like carrying on, drinking, whatever, sloppy, all that shit. We get, leave the party like maybe four hours later and we're in the taxi and it was Essence Magazine. And she, and I was like, Holy shit. I mean, we're driving back to the campus at FIT and Essence Magazine has just asked me to like call them. And oh, like, and that started everything. That, that basically put me into a, a reputable magazine for my community. And that started everything. And it was Christy Turlington that did that. And then the next year she bl blonde her hair. You can Google this. Oh. She blonde her hair for L'Oreal and she had to do half the, she had to be blonde for that season. Mm -hmm. And we went to the Vogue 100 years party and, um, and we get, we snuck in and I saw her and I was like, oh my gosh, this Chrissy Chillington. And I just wanted to go up to her cause I never saw her at the party. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to say, thank you. And that she turned around and she was like, Chucky. And I was like, oh my God, like a whole season, like a whole season, <laughs> whole season went by and I was like, you remember my name? And she was like, yes, yes. And then I ended up doing her hair for Maybelline. And then she was one of the models who was, who went to South Africa with us to Nelson Mandela's house. Mm -hmm. and, and, she, and, she, and she said, I knew you were going to be a great hairstylist one day. I felt your energy. And that's why, you know, the whole thing with the party and just, she goes, I remembered your name. And it was so humbling. But she's one of the only ones who, who brought me to that space to, to actually like, give a nobody kid chance and then um but nobody's really turned me on to to i did i had a friend at fit mm -hmm. and she had put a she had she had a cover of a old it was a brooklyn magazine that she was working on mm -hmm. and she said we're doing a cover of this new girl and so i did this girl with braids and we put princess leia buns and i put christmas trees and things inside because it was a christmas um uh cover mm -hmm. and a year later I'm having lunch at Rockefeller Center just because it was a nice day and I wanted to go somewhere to a new area in New York. It was just like, maybe I've been in New York maybe a few years. And this woman stops me and she's like, you, 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 you're, you're the guy. You're, 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 you, put, you put the things in our girl's hair. And I was like, yes. And I was like, oh, my friends cover the magazine. She was like, we, she, we've been looking for you for a year. And I was like, what are you talking about? She grabbed my hand and she was like, you got to come with me, child. You got to come, black woman, Chrissy mm -hmm. Murray. She, I hope maybe she's watching Chrissy Murray and she um, brought, brought me up to a, to a 25th floor. The elevator door opens and it's Atlantic Records. I, what? It was Brandy. I didn't even know I was doing Brandy. I didn't even know. And that's the thing about not not being a celebrity hairstylist is I didn't know it was Brandy. It mm -hmm. was some girl that I wanted to cover. This is my first cover. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't care less who it was. So 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 I got the um, I she said, can you be in L.A. in four days? And, and I was like, oh my gosh, yes. And they, I, I borrowed money from friends at FIT and they, they put their credit card down so I could um, rent a car. And I got to LA and I got backstage for the American Music Awards. My first time with Brandy was American Music Awards. And I was floored because for the first time I got to see all the other black stylists and, and other hairstylists in the industry for the first time. And they were like, who are you? You're new. Who are you? And they were like, she's the biggest star. Like Brandy was huge. Mm -hmm. and they were like, she's the biggest star. You're doing whatever. And I, was, oh, 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 I couldn't believe. And Kim Kimball used to do her braids. Mm -hmm. She used to do the braids. So Kim Kimball would be, and I didn't know this until Kim Kimball became, you know, goddess Kim Kimball. Mm -hmm. I love Kim. Kim is like one of the, my biggest helpers in the industry. 
Mm -hmm. of all these children. Yeah, I know. I love him too. You know, and, uh, so your so your so a lot of so a lot of your success has been from relationships of just yeah being... doing something and then it happened to be like like I met the I met a, one girl on our campus, Lisa Fernandez. It's Lisa Marie Fernandez on Instagram. She sells bathing suits now to Rihanna. Mm -hmm. She was the first girl that worked at uh, that worked at um, Young and Modern YM Magazine, and mm -hmm. she said, I did her hair. She said. This guy, you, we hear that he's doing fierce hairstyles on campus because I was also doing club kids and drag queens, and that's where I get the big hair from. Mm -hmm. you know, the lady bunny and all that. Mm -hmm. and they were in, that's what inspires me because that's the world I saw. And mm -hmm. when you're on psychedelics and you're like carrying on in the clubs <laughs> in the 90s, those things are like really accentuated and really, and you want to do them for fashion. Mm -hmm. So, so um, she, she actually, she actually said, I want him to do a fierce hairstyle. And I actually did the um, Jean-Paul Gaultier had where it was a big model. It was all rollers, mm -hmm. all rollers piled up. So I put rollers in her hair. And then I strung rollers like you would string popcorn and cherries on a string. And I, mm -hmm. I rolled them on there. And I sort of laced them around her hair all over and brought it up to the, you know, the point. She mm -hmm. loved it. It was fantastic. She said, you have to work for my magazine. You have to work. I'm, I'm working at YM Magazine as she was like the assistant fashion editor or something. And I was like, oh my gosh, because she was like in a more graduate program at FIT. So it wasn't like where we were. Mm -hmm. she, she picked me up and brought me right on. That's how I met Billy B and um, the makeup artist Billy B and, mm -hmm. uh, and Ramel Wilson was, he was a, he was Naomi Campbell's stylist since she was 14 mm -hmm. and like other people that in the industry that really like just solidified my space and, and, that was just by chance. It, and they're all were by chance because I didn't know these people. Like I didn't know the girl from Brandy and I didn't know the girl on campus. They just were like, oh, let, let me try him. And then I worked it out and they were like, we want you. And that's how it's really been. And that's why I feel blessed a lot because mm -hmm. I didn't have to fight for it. I had to fight for my own feelings inside and mm -hmm. those demons and what's in my head. But I never really had to fight for the outside jobs. Mm -hmm. which, which, which I'm very blessed for. And um, I think it's because if you love something, because a lot of kids just want to be a celebrity hairstylist for the title. But if you don't really love it, you're, it it'll divorce from you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and like like love that we all fall in love and have those first boyfriends and we go and this and that and go, and you think it was love and things. That's really what it is if you don't really truly have the craft to do that thing. You can't just do it. Mm -hmm. No. You can just do it, but you can't. I mean, your creations, you're, you're, I mean, you're, you're like, there's no way that you can like conduct that orchestra with, mm -hmm. without, Thank without you. your love, without, mm -hmm. the, like, that's what's going on in your heart. You're just doing mm -hmm. the imprint on the outside. Well, what, I, what I've been telling them throughout these conversations is that from, from a hair standpoint, I love, I love the hair show part of hair. Um, then I love making women beautiful. I'm not really keen on being behind the chair a lot, like, but I know that's part of making women beautiful. Yeah. But I love, like, give, tell me I got to do a 10-minute stage presentation. Oh, I can go crazy. <laughs> and you have. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I could I could be, I could be in that moment. But, yeah. the, but the, the, the mundane, like, I don't want to pressure here no more. I don't want to, you know, curl it no more. Like, that mundane part of it, I don't, I like getting new clients that want me to create a new look for them. And I want to do that. And I will give it to my other stylists. And like, okay, child, y'all can do her every week. I just want to create new. Like I just like creating new. Yes, just, yes. You know, and just making a woman feel beautiful. <laughs> that's yes. that's the part I love about it. Yeah. Uh, what if you can leave with? If you can leave everybody because they only give us. Which I would, I hate Instagram Live do this. They only give you an hour of talking. Oh. But, um, <laughs> if you can leave everybody, if you can leave a young stylist with advice to just step up to the next level, what would that be for them? Um, I, I think we're all in that same thing because the world has changed so much. Now we're all at the beginning. <laughs> but, but I'm like, I need to know. <laughs> you know what, Yancey Edwards, he said that to me the other day. We were talking on the phone. He was like, Derek, everybody's upset about this. He said, but everybody, this puts everybody on the same playing field now. Everybody yes. is starting from, everybody is starting from out the gate. Now yes. the thing is, is that you need to take this time to use this time to be able to 
push out faster than everybody else. But right now, we are all started the same game. It's but, so, so now, with that, with that knowledge that you know, what would you suggest to what, what information would you give? Advice would you give these stylists coming out the gate? Oh, <laughs> I, I, I want to answer. Um, I, I think that, if, and and I was saying it just to myself. Mm -hmm. That like there's there's has to be ways that you can play with hair or be an artist with hair without a person's head. And I know a lot of stylists, we have a lot of stuff in our closets. My closet over there is filled with a, I got my little wig girl here. I see her in the back. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, like yesterday, Vanessa Williams challenged me to do 43 things. I, I, I've been sitting on the couch, like remote control and on my phone. And, and this gave me a chance to like do something without a head form, without if you had a head form or something, you can put it on the ground or do anything that keeps you in your craft. But you have to love it because I know a lot of kids are out there. They want to be a celebrity hairstylist. They want to see it happen for them outside the home at this point or mm -hmm. outside the home after we get going, after it comes back. Mm -hmm. But if you truly love it and you do art within your house with hair, and I think I'm saying that to me because I've been having too much TV. Don't expect anything on Instagram yet. Right. <laughs> but, um, but, but if there's a way that you can like communicate with your hair, with, with, the, with your love of hair somewhere in your house and take a picture of it, I, I feel that that will keep you in the game. Or because a lot of people are doing lives and you wish you had like the, the, the amount of thousands of followers that you had listening. And so they're not really listening, but at least if you can form a sort of picture book. I'm of the days of portfolios mm -hmm. you, or, or, or like on your website, build things on your website, link people things to your website and get good with yourself. And I think the new plan is just to get vaccinated mm -hmm. and to show the vaccination. Remember when we used to have the vaccination and it was, and you had the scar, uh -huh. everyone could see you had it. Mm -hmm. So it may be something like that. So then when you come into a situation with a celebrity, they know that you're okay and you can start doing your craft again. I think that a lot of things going to change because like how is fashion and, and these hair, how is this going to interpret to our jobs and to our, to our clients? Mm -hmm. I mean, some clients are getting comfortable not having hair and makeup. And if you can shave off a 500 to a thousand dollar do and go from your budget, mm -hmm. honey, I have six months of this hair, I can just uh, <laughs> lick it and, and make it happen. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot, there's some things that will happen that way. I wish I had the answer. My only answer is to just really stay in love with what you do and know that like it's coming your way because what I found in this world is when you feel something that you love, the universe will find a way. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, if you don't share the love of that in any way possible, even if it's just brushing your wigs out and setting them on the thing and, and, and not saying, child, I got to do this, but really brushing them, conditioning them, sorting your hair pieces out, doing things that, you're, that, that really love you. And you don't have to put it on Instagram and you don't have to do it. It's this personal thing. It should be something that you share with yourself and stay in the love of that that the universe will find a way. It finds a match to match the love that you feel for something. And it finds a way to make that bigger. That's mm -hmm. what it does. That's, that's, what, that's what the scientific world, the world does. It, 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 it takes your feelings in your life and your love and makes it bigger. So if, that, if that's any way possible, I know that a lot of people want to know physical things and they want right. physical answers. Mm -hmm. And um, the physical answer is, feel the love and then you will feel like doing whatever it is that's calling upon you and it will happen it happens quicker than you think mm -hmm. you think that like oh it just means me sitting here but if you really go into it the world will give it to you there is um oh what was i that when i when i wanted to lose weight mm -hmm. i went to weight watchers and stuff when i was a kid when I got this tape called the neuropsychology of weight control and it said, just feel the outsides of your body. Cause that's where the most, the least fat is mm -hmm. like the fat is on the inside. Mm -hmm. The fat's all jiggly in between your legs everywhere, but on the outside, it's not. And to close your eyes and to feel yourself being thin and to sit in positions like thin people and cross your legs and squat down. And when you stand up, 
you have a small waistline. And it would, it would say it in your head. It would say it in your head. And I sat there eating chips and eating everything, listening to the tapes and, and feeling myself and feeling. And like in two days, I didn't want to eat those chips. Mm -hmm. Something in my head said, don't eat those chips. And something in my head, I eat, uh, like maybe three or four months later, I started walking and jogging slowly track. This is before I even came to New York City. This was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. and, and I realized from an early time, now that power of attraction is now in our life, that when I did this course, I lost 70 pounds before I came to New York City because mm. I was huge. I was, I was 324 pounds, 5 foot 10. I'm 6'3 now and like, blah, 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 power of <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I lost 70 pounds by, by just believing something that I used to never believe. I believe that I couldn't, I was fat, I was sloppy, I was, uh, uh, uh. and when you believe those things, the universe will give you those things. So if you're not, if you're really not having it happen for you, you're blocking it by something that is making you not feel the love flow mm -hmm. through whatever it is that you want. Because whatever that flow is, it will bring it back to you. And that's really the only way I can say it for me and for everybody else, because there's not a lot of hope and there's not a lot of everyone's like, the hope is gone here. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, but it, it's, it's for a new light. It's a, this is a bigger picture that's happening to us than our jobs and our lives and our mm -hmm. lives. It is, it is to break down the government's systems, to, to, to equate everybody, to, to put things in perspective with what we've been doing to this planet, what we've been doing to animals, what we've been doing to abusive everywhere. And mm -hmm. it has run rampant. And now they want us to now look at phones and digital and go on spaceships and fly out and do these things after we haven't even came together with what is here. Mm -hmm. And so this is what it is. It's the earth spitting back. It's, it's fighting back at us. We've drilled it to death. We have resourced it to death. And the earth is like, Coronavirus, boom. Right. <laughs> so, Sit no, down. Nothing, only human beings are in cages right now. Everybody mm -hmm. else is, the birds are tweeting, the nature's like, hey, look, honey, what's in here? <laughs> and it's you fools that have been doing this to us. Mm -hmm. And so th that bigger picture is what's going on here. And it's sad that we're going to lose lives through it. But when we come out of this, there's going to be a real glory that we that we cannot see now and if you can keep that within yourself and with with things that you love with yourself i think that you you will match that new day and come together with with what you want and child just keep doing these things and putting pictures out letting people know that you're still alive and that you're still relevant mm -hmm. that's what it really is chucky when i when this is all over with I, i'm gonna come to new york i need to feel your energy i need to feel all of this <laughs> Chucky, I love you yeah. so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you so thank much. You. And then I will be seeing you once all this is over with, okay? Yes, definitely. <laughs> I love seeing your face here. <laughs> thank you, Chucky. No, I'll no, you, later, no. you have a great Bye -bye. weekend. You Drag too. race tonight. Drag race. Right. <laughs> hey, you guys, that was absolutely amazing. Um, oh. You know, I mean, it's just so much good energy in our industry. And I'm glad that we're all being able to talk to each other and just being able to share and ex experience each other even through this time. Um, tomorrow, I will have um, Nicole Walters on here. And I will explain the story about Nicole Walters um, tomorrow. Hey, Janelle. Um, so, but thank you guys. And I will see you guys tomorrow at 5 o'clock.